So recording microtrack design session with James Wise Marchin here. So let's take a look at the existing CAD. I'm actually looking at at the Google warehouse, SketchUp warehouse, just to manipulate that in 3D. Okay, so um, what are your next steps that you're thinking, James? Uh, well, that's kind of you know, hoping for some feedback. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it just looks like if I keep going down this route. It's gonna yeah, I think what we have right now, the crazy structure that looks like whoa, there's okay, there's a clear power cube. Okay, if you take a look at it from the back side looks good i mean you know the thing that's missing is of course the tracks so someone might be like what's this right. but if you think about adding the tracks here i think that looks proper there's a big track system on the bottom and a power cube on top so i mean that's you know that's what you need you got drive you've got a a power source and you we have a platform for an operator to stand on we're using Right now we're using all our stock pieces like the tubing and plates. We're pretty much sticking to that. We've got a very simple loader arm system, which is, which I think if I you... I didn't fully uh, check, you know, I just grabbed yeah. the uh, cylinders off the warehouse, but I haven't... Right, but you even, you know, you even pulled the cylinders that actually fit more or less. That might be sufficient. I mean, the spec is to have a working weight of 500 pounds it could probably do 1000 pounds at that angle where i'm looking at i mean those cylinders have like 10,000 pounds or 15 about 10 about 10,000 pounds of force if you use the 3 by 8 or so something to that effect so i don't think we're going to be I, I think the geometry there basically is doing it um then we have to consider the the loader cylinders but I think we can f figure that out I think the single cylinder is quite sufficient at what we need to do right now um, as long as you've got firm mounting of the firm bushings for these to like the n nice solid shaft like the, say that one and seven eighths inch shaft that we used uh, before so that's looking good uh, my only question would be the non-symmetry of the track mounting you did that because it was necessary to mount the plates to that at a slight angle or can they be made higher for both of them and make it still acceptable when so i'm pointing to i'm looking at the 3d image if we're pointing on these uh roller track roller idler mounts which are it goes up in one side and goes down on the other um, I'm not, I'm talking to myself okay. here. Okay. I'm looking at the 3D. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah, so I'm just looking at the one idler holder that's facing up towards the back, the other one's facing up towards the front. Um, what was your design rationale for making them uh, one up and one down? Yeah. yeah so one concern is that you need to place it above the mo yeah um, yeah no i see it the the one that's facing up to the front is like that because you need to go over the motor mount the one that's yeah okay that's the geometrically restricted by the fact that you need to go over the motor mount but if we raise them higher on each side like so instead of having to go over the oh i see i see there's let's see is it well what if can just for symmetry and just like ease of um everything if we raise them up would that hurt us any so that they're actually both parallel to the ground would that uh hurt oh, anything oh, uh yeah well, I, uh, I just mostly had that angle in there just because the uh, i was trying to get the uh, 8 by 12 uh, 16. i see because of the 8 by 16 plate yeah um <laughs> Yeah, maybe we don't have to restrict ourselves because, for example, yeah, see, right, right, now, too. right. Um, see that angle mounting through the holes. You have to start reaming out holes. Yep. 
so or use a smaller bolt so it's I think it's doable but maybe just I don't know I don't think it really hurts well, I, it I, really, really it was gonna be on a it was gonna be a, a, a pivot it would pivot you know on an axis at the uh, 8x12 ah. and, then, and then the other end ah. would have a spring and then that's where the tensioning would have happening oh so that's your tensioning mechanism yeah, that's, I'll, I'll just take that ah. opportunity no, that's actually quite a nice idea to have that be the tensioning mechanism so we can lift it up somehow. Um, yeah, just have some kind of a... If we tension it, how would we fix it? It would be some kind of a threaded rod that just pulls it up or something. Yeah, I was wondering if we could look in like an auto parts store just find like you know, a big spring and uh -huh. kind of make some... Uh, I could like try a, a big like spring. A big I mean, a big spring, though, would be hard by hand if you're talking about manually getting it up um yeah or i mean like you could like uh, i was thinking maybe you could like just twist you know have like all thread yeah something like it. that all thread plus spring or something yeah um mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah that sounds good to me i mean i think i mean i think altogether i mean if we can get the tracks on here that wouldn't be bad so here's my other thought i, I was thinking along the lines of a scalable track system where the dr the rollers that you drew up right now for one I would consider making them all the same size for minimum parts count because and then uh, potentially unless we need to be bigger uh, for so so the drive one is bigger because it needs to be uh, have more surface area it might be uh. the case track is on that yeah at, right at one time. Like for a better bigger, drive right oh. yeah so that we make sure that we don't slip yeah I mean, you always get a firm group of it. yeah yeah okay no that's let's let's just leave that for now um so i mean i, I was kind of like i kind of drew up two different styles of tracks uh-huh and i'm not you know there's you know, there's a lot of different ways you can go with the actual track design you know how to how they interlink mm-hmm Right. You know, the, the kind of the I have now are kind of just a basic, you know, scheme. Mm -hmm. It worked in Zuby rolling, but I think they're going to change once we figure out what kind of track we want to make. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Um, so the other idea was that, so right now, what are they, six inches? They can't be eight because the tubing is four. They look a little bigger than the tubing, not but not twice. They look like five or six. Uh, the, one, the one in the front and the back. Well, I mean, no, I mean the the width, not the height. Uh, 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 okay. Yeah, the width of the track. Uh, five inches. Yeah. Five inches right now. But I mean, that, that, I mean, but that, I mean that that might not even, you know, it's like. Like we might just end up having some sort of like sprocket there that might interlink into the the uh, tracks, so maybe we wouldn't actually have. Right, right. Yeah, we don't have those details yet. Okay, but I was thinking. So why don't we design the sprockets such that if you gotta scale this for bulldozer scale, then you can put on two or three of these cogs. So right now we can go with like a minimum track size, like probably six inches would be perfectly fine for this application. If you're talking about a 30,000 pound bulldozer, you want to have 18 inches or so, or two feet, such that you're using multiple numbers of the same sprocket, which would be a neat idea to make the track absolutely scalable from the smallest machine to the largest machine. So, you know, the largest machines, you can have two or three feet. You're just using a number of these sprockets. And, th and that way, what if the tracks were designed to be in six foot width base units? And then we can put several of them, like, you know, three or four, when you're talking about 18 or 26, 24 inches. 
Um, that's an idea that I would have for scalability. Because uh, imagine, imagine a scenario where in the future, the, potentially there's a large number of these around the world and um, we're trying to maximize the basically the appropriate technology regime of this so that, you know, in various scenarios, if you have one track, that, that same type of track has interchangeable parts for all kinds of machines. I think that would be a great idea if we can do it. So, you know, say you've got a spare link, you know, your bulldozer broke, you can take a spare link from a micro tractor, whatever. So any tracked machine follows the same pattern that you just greatly, vastly reduce the number of, of parts that are out there just in terms of standardization for max function for minimum effort you know that kind of deal uh, it would be a neat idea if that works if we could make the track actually scalable that would be a, a pretty amazing thing for now I would say we just go forth go forward what if we do so yeah I mean I would say definitely keep that in mind so I'm gonna yeah, I mean, uh, one thing I can say right now is like uh, you know I've got most of it right now I've got welded together uh huh but for the actual like inch by six inch blade I've got there for like the bottom of the contact track. Like, you could probably have an angle iron off of that and bolted it to that and then go up to the actual track linkage system. But uh yeah that'd be a lot of bolts. I don't know. We'd rather weld and um I I, I could draw that up and I'll draw yeah. that up and show you like, there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of notes here in the um, Microtrack 2015. Okay, in that presentation there. Okay, I'm going to put a couple of notes here. In the... Let's make a track 2015. Okay, so... Yeah, um... I can't really share my screen, but go into that document, and I, I have a couple of ideas. Um, so go into the Google presentation. Mm -hmm. So. I think that what you're drawing up right now can potentially work, and I think, you know, altogether, um, if we look at that, I mean, that's, to me, that seems workable, like this solution would actually work. I mean, what are the challenges to this? I mean, maybe just a little bit more clearance, but that's easily doable by larger, larger idlers. Now, yeah. do we have a clear way to, like, if we talk about mounting those idlers, how are we going to do that through the tubing? You know, I was just thinking, have it. One inch shaft. Kind of tied it to the. Have one nut up against the four by four, and then kind of have some sort of spacer, maybe, and then other bolts. I haven't really. Maybe we could just. I don't know if we'd want to get a big ass uh, bearing or something. Or... Yeah. So one inch sounds a little thin. I mean, that's definitely. A little uh, thin. Yeah, I mean, that that'll definitely bend up on you. Um, probably want to go. Let's see if we can do. If we're using the two two inch shaft, let's just go with that. Maybe like. But what do we do? What's the um, what's the mechanism there? We can potentially do the. Hmm. We could somehow mount it to the below the four by four. Yeah. Yeah, you can do right below. Just a little standoff. Uh, 
you could um, I mean for long life so you don't have parts wearing there yeah bearings would be nice now what do you think about so that's that's one thing to I mean I think the biggest risk here is like okay how do we actually execute on a track it's uh you know it's uh it is a not a trivial structure um, you think the little rollers would be a, a good idea what if we just had instead of the little rollers that is a bit of work uh, yeah. it's not necessarily yeah, that, that that's probably going to change when we pick out what track we're actually going to use do we want to what if we used just one big idler so it's got three idlers on each side and that's it not a bunch of rollers yeah I mean that could work yeah just, I, that's how I had your driven up earlier but mm-hmm you know, I would I just, say. I just you, know, you see that on the dingo, so I thought you know, I tried that. Right. Right no, this is good. Save this. Um, right. I would. I would probably say just for simplicity's sake. So that's a number of parts we'd have to make and mount. Right. So yeah, just maybe do one roller. See how good the traction is when you've got the tracks and then the three idlers. It should be pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, even if the, we don't like the three idlers, it's, you know, it, it's just it should be, just be a matter of popping that off and yep. putting this on. You know, I mean, yeah, if we've got the three idlers and none of these tiny idlers, the tiny idlers would would also introduce some complexities. And well, depending on once again, we're not we haven't drawn up the track. So yeah, I would say okay. The suggestion would be yeah, just do one one idler in the middle. Um, so let me just put that in. Do one idler instead of many idlers. Okay, do that. And for up there, I was thinking, okay, okay, no, let's let's finish the track. So, one I that I think with those three rollers, we can pretty much be be good to go. Um, one thing we can do for the shaft mounting, <laughs> we can uh, the mounting of the idler shafts. I mean, we can, you know, just remount a two-inch hole through the tubing and just put a a bearing. A two flange bolt bearing, two flange yeah. bearing. Yeah, we probably yeah we can we can do that. I mean, um, but I wouldn't be comfortable with less than like 1.5 inch shaft. And if we just stick to standard shaft sizes, which we have used, which is one and one and seven eighths, and then the three inch, just you know just for the fun of uh, minimizing parts count, we can definitely use one and seven eighths for a super stiff shaft that's not going to give us problems. Um, and that would be a safe bet, so we don't have these rollers breaking all over the place. Because um, definitely one inch would, you'll pretty quickly bend that. Um, so let's do a two bolt mount. Um, two bolt flange, and then remount flange bearings. I mean, they're like you know twenty bucks a pop, but all right. Um, I think we have to do that properly. We can potentially do a bushing through the, like right on the, uh, um, how do we, no, no, I mean, uh, then, uh, then the, no, if you've got the two, two bearings, then that's your shaft spinning and then you got the idler. That's good. It's all good. So the, the idler is mounted to the shaft. So we make a bunch of these idlers. Um, the more regular the idlers are, like if we could potentially make them all identical, yeah. Um, the better, um, so that in terms of crowd swarm production, it's easy. You just got the same part you're cranking out multiple times, um, and then just okay. So remount to uh, one, basically one seven eighth inch shaft hole. Yeah, yeah. I think that could do it. Um, and that way, oh yeah, for the drive idler, that's going to have, we have the wheel drive units that are both three inches and one and seven eighths that we've used historically. 
So yeah, we can right now if we pull the drive units off the trencher, which I was looking at doing. Uh, those have three inch shaft. Um, then we can probably do that for the drive wheels. I mean, I've got the trencher sitting out here that's not doing anything because we got to have a heavier tractor to mount that trencher on because it's weight. Not, not. I mean, that trencher, the six foot wide trencher wheel, that's disused until we have a heavier tractor because the back of the tra tractor just kept on coming off the ground even if we had three power cubes. So you got to rework that. Um, okay, but we have the three inch shaft drive units universal wheel units uh, ready we have two of those so we can I mean we can prototype this like before you know like as soon as we get a good design we can actually start testing out I, mean, I can get out here and work start you know experimenting with the tracks test driven design but yeah 3d printing would be really good let's 3d print it we can tell a lot I told a lot about the trailer from the 3d print as silly as it was yeah. I mean uh, it told me a lot like I totally shifted from those 4 by 8 panels because that just wasn't gonna work um, yeah, so let's let's try to do a 3D print. But yeah, I think let's use the three-inch shafts for the drive wheels. Um, I would say that. Three-inch shaft for drive wheels. Uh-huh. So I think that kind of solves the tracks. I mean, right now as is, it could it could work. So you can probably raise. So you can raise the. Let's see. We can raise that slanted bar. We have to worry about how we mount the. Right. We can't really mount it using our standard plates at that point. Um, if we've got 16 inches, that doesn't do it. Let's see. Four eight. 12. It doesn't? Uh, no, the, uh, you know, that, uh, the, what do you call it? The, 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 the motor mount is, is like 10 inches. inches. Up to four. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Well, we can extend onto those. Let's, do, we can just cheat on that one. I think that's fine. You can, I mean, you can bolt two of those together. I want to just weld them. Um, or potentially, if you've got the, let me see that. Can you actually mount them to the frame? Well, if you extended, if if we extended the frame member. Oh yeah, I just noticed that frame right there. Yeah. There's ways to. Yeah, you could do like a vert, some kind of a v connection to possibly even the underside of the power cube. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Um, as long as we're not raising the height, we're fine with lifting that member up to wherever we need it. Um, right. And we could potentially... Yeah, yeah. Right. Is there any way to lower the power cube a few inches? Let's see. Is what w or uh, let's say what would it take to do that? The problem. The problem. You get. You start getting really close to the tracks, where the uh, it goes between that high idler. And oh, the high track. idler, right? We can't do it because of the high idler. Oh yeah. Um. I had it down lower earlier than I saw that. Oops. What if you mount that idler not on that beam, but mount it off the front bracket, at the front bracket under the loader? then you wouldn't need that beam at all. Would that clear the drive wheel? Or we're still getting pretty close. We're kind of getting close. Oh. Kind of getting close. 
No, but not really, not necessarily. Like if if the idler, instead of being mounted on a sliding, on that, that slanted beam, it appears that you can probably mount it on the front, the front structure under the loader. Right yep, there. Yep, yep. That's not, that's not Try see if you can do okay now what about the one on the other side though? I think that's works Same, right. similar. Same Could try something similar. And then you can make some kind of a that that one has to be adjusted by pulling up on it. So yeah, but I think we can we can do something, cause yeah, yeah, without that beam. Um Yeah. We can quite likely get the the power cube down four inches. Can you try doing that? No, just it's close, right? Because of that. I mean, we can make a smaller idler. Yeah, you can make a slightly smaller idler to make it fit. Or we can even... Let's see, what else? What other trick can we pull? Smaller idler or... I mean, the thing you, you could do is you move it further forward, but then you you, know, you kind of lose your grip on it on the lower, the lower one. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I see. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of a of a sprocket like system for the the track that you've got. I mean, that's what bulldozers do. But if those sprockets are like, I don't know, like two inches, and the tracks are tensioned pretty high, we're not gonna be slipping off of that. Uh, I mean, it depends on our on our cog design. I think we could probably make something that you can't, it will have a really hard time slipping. Because the, the, the issue is that how you're driving the, the track, right? Because you, um, you know, say the tracks are like a quarter inch steel. Um, if it, they got holes in it for the, the drive cog, you know, we can, if it's a single drive cog, cog that's like, you know, say half inch steel. Maybe it would be like a double cog, like a couple of sprockets that are half inch steel, two or three maybe. I don't know, probably like two, maybe spaced apart. Like maybe two inches apart, spaced, and they drive a six inch wide track, so it's like they're two inches in. Um, does that make sense? Uh, yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> so think of a sprocket, like basically drive the track as if it were well you're driving the track with two sprockets spaced at two inches however this sprocket. i mean typically a sprocket it looks like a very heavy structure with one looks like a bicycle um sprocket right right uh you know, except I, this I, is I, all beefed up on those two types i drew over on the, off the side there like i kind of kind of made one of the uh cuts if we could put sprockets down in there in, each, in between each track kind of deal. I don't know if that's... Sprockets between each track? Uh, uh, you see how I put like divots? Like four divots in each piece of track? Like directly if those are... Okay, track. What are you talking about? Track? Where's the track? Oh, off. Uh, kind of behind where the... You stand. I'm looking online and it doesn't appear the. Okay, the I, I, drew, I drew two little tracks on a newer model. Newer. Oh, I'll take a picture. Can you share your screen? See if you can share your screen. Um. Yeah, I. Oh, you got tracks like that. Uh-huh. 
so the sprocket is riding those tracks i was like thinking the, the like this one the one to the left we have like two sprockets kind of I don't even know oh, I see, I see. Going into this. Yeah. Well, okay, the that. Kind of like, you have, you have a, you know, you'd have oh, a, wow. You run on the in between parts. Kind of okay, thing. no, that that's uh, that looks pretty good. Is that, did you come up with that or did you look at some industry standards? I, I saw something like, uh, like a ditch witch had a, mm -hmm. like a, to, for a trencher. That was kind yeah. Of right. Kind of why they link, link the trencher. Um, <laughs> Right, so that's just the connecting between the tracks, which I like that, and then the drive is elsewhere, like on the sides, like with those divots. Yeah, I like that. I think that's pretty good. Um, so these little things, if we get the torch table, it wouldn't be a problem to make these things, and then stick, stick pins. Are you familiar with hardening of tracks or anything like that? No. We gotta look that up. Oh, we just gotta look up industry standards like patent search uh, have you ever looked for patents uh, just like, you know, you yeah actually I just started looking at it it's it's actually really useful it's like they, they actually speak English in those patents <laughs> so so uh, you just look but up I, anything I, I mean, Google patents if you want to look and like find like this off-the-shelf track we can like, we can try as long as the price is right I mean I, I, I suspect right. that our price is going to be way lower. We're just taking mild steel and then perhaps just flame harden it or whatever, or oil harden it, or even air harden it or something like that. I mean, that definitely gets it more strength. So, um, and then we should look, I mean, for the first prototype of this thing, just drives we know it's going to wear out but i mean i think at the first prototype level i don't think we need to do any hardening we just gotta right, right. see if it works and then we go forward from there until unless unless we get somebody on a team that knows what they're doing with hardening of tracks and things um uh, you know the, yeah i said like do you want to try to minimize you know all the pins and all that stuff or like yeah I mean I think I mean yeah yeah it gets gets repeti repetitive if it's regular and if it's um, you know if it's very regular and it's, there's a lot of pieces it's not necessarily too bad because we can swarm that and yeah, get a production yeah. line going on that um, but I guess the track, what you're doing there is probably making the tracks short enough that they wrap nicely around the, the small sprockets, right? We can also, what we should probably do is enlarge the sprocket size so that the tracks, each track piece, I mean, I would say something like four by six inches would be the right track dimension more or less because uh, here you I mean here what you're drawing is probably more like two inches yeah 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 I mean see. make them I would say probably enlarge the the sprockets make track pieces four inches um, I don't know, the scalable track will give up that idea for now. We'll worry about that later once we build the first one. Um, so do track piece 4 inch by 6 inch about um, and then enlarge the idler to match I mean it will probably be it'll probably be de determined totally by the um, idler size we have to match it to the idler yeah we probably have to increase the idlers to avoid those tight angles um, To 
match the track. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so let's yeah, let's try to figure out the track. I like what you're doing with the track with the chain linking them, the pins linking it, that's an easy way to do it. Um, the other way I mean what's another way to do it? You can have I don't know, I haven't really looked into the geometry a lot, but yeah, I think what you're doing is is one good way that's probably doable quite readily. Um, and they, and therefore the, the idlers would have to be wide that they're supporting around your, your chain part. Yeah. But look at that. I mean, literally with that chain, it really does appear like, what if we just pulled out hundred weight chain yeah, no. and just weld it? Yeah. Maybe, maybe build it around that. I mean, that would be definite time savings let's see what's hundred weight chain cost about let's see hundred weight um, chain wait what's it called chain what are those chains called hundred weight chain uh, roller, roller chain roller chain Is easy to get and 100 is hard to get. Okay. Is 80, yeah. No, 80 would do. 80, 80 would definitely do for what we need. Okay, so maybe um, an 80 is pretty decently big. Let's see how much does it cost. Oh, yeah, you could get like 80 double chain. Because all we need to do that is, is for that to hold the pieces together. Um, let's see. 10 feet, 70 bucks from Agri Supply uh, for 80, 80 double. Oh, let's see. I mean, Surplus Center has that. Let's see. Well, just weld it and then just save a link that's um see but that no that that has to be the two chain pieces have to be far apart enough that we might need like weld one one single strand kind of like wide apart kind of like which let's see if you're driving that with a double sprocket on the sides. Yeah, no, that's going to be um, 10 foot box. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, it's like 40 bucks for 10 feet, that's fine. Um, it's about what we need, like 10 feet for a track. Um, I think that could be a doable thing. Um, we probably would need a couple of them, though. Um, yeah, so we can consider... Consider roller chain for binding track pieces. You see the issue of how if you have one roller chain just down the middle, uh, you probably want to have what you have in your design with the, the track piece. The uh, it's wide. Your your. Uh, your connection is wide, it's like two inches wide or something. So we probably want to have this roller chain, like two strands, 
probably at two inches of separation or something like that so that the track won't twist right. uh, kind of that deal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, what else? I don't know. Right. I mean, we kind of explore that for okay. a while and see what we come up with, I guess. Okay, so explore that. So the, so the things to consider, tr try the track pieces, consider roller change for binding track pieces, design track pieces. So try to get the, um, basically the slanted idler supports replace the slanted idler supports with other mount yeah that's doable for you I think so yeah mm -hmm. Tensioner. We're gonna need some kind of a tensioner on that setup. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to have some tensioning mechanism to get the tracks off. Unless the. Yeah. I mean, def I think definitely in all cases, unless it's it's you pull a pin in the chain itself. If we use the standard off-shelf chain and pulling a pin, you have to have a little tool, and it might. Yeah. Yeah, I mean we can do a link chain, link link thing. So this is one one bonding thing, which it's an easy pin to pull, like not the chain itself, but another type of a pin, like a special pin, like maybe like a you know three quarter inch pin that we pull out and the track falls apart. But I think the idler tensioner is probably required in all cases. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, I mean, definitely for bigger machines, this little machine, we might, you know, we might be able to get away with that. But, uh, no, the, I mean, I think, yeah, put in the idler tensioner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, I think that's good. And, yeah, I, I think that's, yeah, I, I think the tracks are working out, especially if we get it lower the height, lower the height by four inches. Um, so yeah, uh, that allows us to lower the lower height by four inch, which means exactly as the Toro Dingo. So that's actually better. I mean, it is, if you do look at it, it is a little bit, um, it's taller than it's wide. So it is a tipping danger. Uh, and to some extent, I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, you're going to tip this thing over on steeper terrain. So the lower... The lower the better. Um, yeah. But I yeah. Kind of, like a, uh, you know, like a backyard flat kind of work thing. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll think in general or if we do it like. Yeah, I mean the Tor Dingo doesn't look too stable to the side either. It's pretty narrow. So yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, and for, you know, so if we get this down to, instead of five feet, we get it down to four and eight inches, that does make that critical threshold. Well, no, actually, the person is standing on it, so 
Oh yeah, so that's fine. But basically a five foot person can operate this. You have to be like five feet. Yeah. So that's most people. Like some considering Katarina, Katarina is about five, so she'll be able to handle this. Yeah, she get, she get like a periscope. Yeah. Yeah, but that platform actually, yeah, you can make that platform as high as we like. So I think that's that's good. We're we're fine on that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay, that sounds pretty good. So, do you want to talk talk again when uh, sometime this week? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I got I'm going out of town next weekend. Okay. Okay. So I'll, try, I'll try to get some done this week. Kind of have something. Yeah, let me know as soon as you got something going on. Let's talk about it and, and see if we can get this going. Yeah. For prototyping, if you give us the file, we can. How do you do it? You do. You can do the STLs. Let's see. How do we do the STLs? We pretty much gotta break this apart, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got the tubes, um, but yeah, all the components. It would be nice to prototype it in as much detail as possible. Like, I guess the the big part for the tracks, if we can print them out as tiny little units. Yeah. I mean, how, 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 like, how small do you think we could really get? Like, On a printout? Um, no, I think we can we can do that if if we but we probably have to modify the link because I mean we can't pl print a flexible chain so probably maybe for the track do like a simulator mm, where I can basically make little track sections and you just put needles through it like for pins yeah. that we can actually simulate the pins just put little little nails or needles to connect the track members together. I think that's doable, just needles, short yeah, like needles or something. Line. Hmm? Like machine line, maybe just a little, little knot, machine line. Yeah. Yep, yeah, something, something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. That all sounds good to me. Sounds good, sounds good. So yeah, let me know as soon as you got something, and we'll continue doing this. And we'll, we'll, we're going to definitely put this on the calendar, I think. Um, I'm gonna try to get the power cube up tonight. Maybe this even, if possible. If if uh, Jean produces the infographic, um, let's see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as soon as you can pump out the tracks, I think that's when we want to publish it. Right now, it's like I don't want to scare people off with it. It looks a little scary. But yeah, let's let's put the tracks on it and see if we can go forward. Yeah. Okay. That's great. So we'll talk soon as you got you got something else and shout if you got any questions. Alright. Sounds good. Hi James. Thanks a lot. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. See you. Bye bye.